On today's episode, Chinese EVs invade Europe, open fans power future jets, and hydrogen fuel cell locomotives for clean rail transportation. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. In 1974, General Electric and French engine maker Safran launched a 50-50 joint venture called CFM International, a partnership that eventually produced over 35,000 jet engines flown by over 600 operators globally. This arrangement was renewed in 2008 to support the LEAP geared turbofan next generation engine project and now the two firms have extended the CFM partnership to 2050 in support of the new CFM RISE program. RISE stands for Revolutionary Innovation for Sustainable Engines, which aims to reduce engine emissions by more than 20% with alternate fuel capability including sustainable carbon fuels and hydrogen. The program will require a significant advancement in the state of the art and CFM predicts that production engines will be ready for delivery in the 2030s. Geared turbofan technology is delivering a 15% improvement over previous generation high bypass ratio engines, itself a significant achievement, so delivering another 20% will be a difficult task. CFM plans to achieve this with a back to the future approach using an open fan architecture. Now unducted fans have been the subject of research for decades, but delivering production engines with reliability, maintainability, and jet-like speeds with a reasonably quiet cabin environment will also been a challenge for commercial applications. The company will use advanced composite fan blades, new super alloys and ceramic matrix composites and will add hybrid electric capability and significant electrification of engine systems, all built with increased use of additive manufacturing. CFM expects to build a lot of hardware, more than 300 component assembly and full engine builds. The team plans to complete a demonstrator engine by 2025 and flight test extensively. Early ducted fan research engines in the 1980s were notable for noise, fatigue, and durability issues, but new generation materials plus the strength and weight advantages of 3D printed structures may make fans the shape of things to come in commercial aviation. What's old is new. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. Chinese-made consumer goods have dominated many world markets and in sectors such as housewares and consumer electronics. Now, one market where Chinese goods have yet to make a significant impact in Western markets, however, is automobiles. Now, that may be changing as battery and vehicle major BYD has announced the shipment of the first 100 European specification electric SUVs for its customers in Norway. BYD has successfully marketed electric buses for European markets, but this initial shipment of passenger cars well, marks a significant milestone. European passenger car regulations are strict and European consumers are both discriminating and able to choose from multiple EV brands. Now the BYD branded offering, the Tang SUV, is a large seven seat all wheel drive vehicle that uses BYD's blade battery technology. Now, according to the company, the 86 kilowatt hour battery gives the vehicle a single charge any DC range of over 500 kilometers and can charge between 30 to 80% of capacity in 30 minutes. The firm states that nail penetration and furnace tests show that the battery pack is significantly safer than the lithium ion phosphate technology. The company will market and service the vehicles through the Scandinavian auto distributor RSA. Why Norway? Well, that nation has emerged as an ideal test market for many electric vehicle models ahead of wider European rollout, and BYD plans to ship 1,500 vehicles into the Norwegian market before the end of the year. Now, the EU is a tough competitive market for electric vehicles with multiple models from foreign makers such as Tesla, as well as domestic offerings from majors like Volkswagen and Stellantis. Norway could be make or break for Chinese EVs in that important European market. Cars, trucks, and even airplanes are widely expected to be battery powered in the future, but they're not the only modes of transportation. While much of the world's passenger rail systems are electrified already, for the vitally important freight services that connect the planet, it's still a diesel powered world. Now that may be changing as locomotive technology heavyweight Wabtec and General Motors have announced that the two firms will collaborate on the development of GM's Ultium battery technology and Hydrotech hydrogen fuel cells for use in Wabtec locomotives. Now, in a sense, locomotives were hybrids long before the term was invented. Diesel engines spin generators which in turn power electric motors, although energy is not stored in conventional systems. For short haul use, Wabtec developed the world's first battery powered locomotive called FlexDrive, which the company claims can cut carbon emissions by up to 30% operating at 6 megawatt hour energy levels. For long haul freight, however, charging is an issue and this is where the GM collaboration comes in. 
GM Ultium battery technology has been developed in a joint venture with LG to power GM's next generation of electric cars and light trucks, with a major production plan under construction in Tennessee. While better batteries allow longer ranges, the key to the new system will be GM's Hydrotech hydrogen fuel cells. These cells are modular and are designed to fit multiple applications. Storage of gaseous hydrogen has been a major issue for automotive and aviation applications, but locomotive use is not as weight sensitive as in the road or air sectors, and refueling infrastructure is relatively easy to install for rail use. Hydrotech fuel cells will be built by Fuel Cell Systems Manufacturing in Brownsville, Michigan, a joint venture between GM and Honda. Could the locomotive application kickstart the hydrogen fuel cell sector and make it a true competitor to all electric propulsion? The combination of Wabtec's rail experience going back a century with GM's similar powertrain capability make it an interesting possibility. Could urban rail eventually switch from catenary or third rail grid supplied systems to hydrogen power? This experiment may tell. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.